Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game of Akiba Rubinstein in Ostende 1907 tournament and this time I would like to show you another chess personality, James Mortimer. Not Mortimer like me, but Mortimer. James Mortimer was an American-British journalist and interesting that he was already 73 years old at that tournament. He got the last place, however, for example, he won against 20 years old uh, Savieri Tartakover. So that's quite an achievement. I mean, he lost the tournament, but sometimes he had the quite good games. Uh, also, he won against Joseph Black Death Blackburn. Uh, and Joseph Blackburn was old, but not as old, 10 years younger, actually, than James Mortimer. So that's also interesting. Now, what do we know more about uh, James? In 1858, that means like 49, almost um, half century earlier, uh, he was one of just a few people who witnessed the famous uh, Paul Morphy versus Adolf Anderson match. Can you imagine that? You know, half of the century earlier, um, just very unique. So definitely he had a lot of stories to say. Uh, during that tournament and as I said he had a quite poor record in the chess tournaments overall not only in the in the Austin 1907 uh, but he was invited to many tournaments and as he was a quite a well-known chess personality so definitely uh, some people like him very much to invite him to the tournaments. Uh, and sometimes, occasionally, he played well. So, for example, in 1883, in the uh, quite big London tournament, he won against Zuckertort or, or, or Chigorin. So, quite also an achievement. Definitely, uh, he just mix up the table a bit. Uh, as you know, the top players uh, should easily win against him, but sometimes, you know, they even lose whole point against James Mortimer. So, um, that's about James Mortimer, who in this game gonna play as Black and Akiba Rubinstein open his favorite D4. We have d5, knight f3, knight f6, and now e3. So Rubinstein goes for the call system. Uh, we have e6, bishop d3, and now c5. Potentially uh, c4 is possible. This is why b3, and this all already is called Rubinstein opening. Uh, one of his favorite openings, he want to bring the bishop to b2 uh, just to support e5. And then the knight, for example, can go to, to e5. Uh, one of the plans uh, in this opening. Uh, we have knight c6 now making uh, more pressure on d4 and now bishop b2 as planned, c takes on d4, e takes on d4 and now bishop d6 developing this bishop as well uh, and taking under control the, the e5 square. Uh, we have castle, castle and now rook e1 just uh, you know getting um, under control e5 and now bishop d7 probably b6 with the idea of, of bishop Bishop b7 and play some kind of symmetrical idea uh, would be better, but we have bishop d7 in our game and now a3, taking away the, the b4 square so the knight, for example, uh, cannot jump to b4 to, to attack this beautiful bishop. Uh, and now we have one game from the 21st century, so it's a well-known uh, system uh, nowadays also, where queen b6 was played. Uh, not really the greatest move, however, queen b6 was tried and after knight b2, d2, g6 and then c4 and white got the very beautiful game, very active, of course c5 is coming, so uh, black have to be very very careful here uh, what to play next. In the game we had the bishop f4, uh, the game ended uh, in the draw, however white had a very very comfortable game. But James Mortimer play rook c8, getting the rook to the to the semi-open c file, pretty natural move, knight b to d2, and now knight e8. So Mortimer tries to set up the stone wall, uh, but in this position is not that great idea. First of all, it's it's quite slow. So we have knight e5, f5 stone wall, and now queen e2, already first threat on the board, because the knight can take the bishop and the queen can pick up the pawn on e6 and win the pawn uh, and probably a game. So something has to be done, probably uh, taking a knight would be the best idea in this position, and after d takes on e5, uh, bring the bishop, for example, to e7, or maybe even 
even to, to B8, potentially stay on this diagonal, uh, maybe even on this diagonal. So uh, black has a couple of options how to continue the game. Uh, however, in our game, Mortimer actually exchanged the dark square bishop, which is quite active and um, really nice piece. So we have bishop e5, d takes on e5, and now uh, how to continue the game as black? It's not so easy because this pawn, uh, for example, okay, is an obstacle, uh, but also not only for the for the, the bishop, the bishop actually controls, defends the pawn, uh, but also uh, it's paralyzed the position of black. This knight cannot, you know, uh, for example, easily develop uh, and so on. So position of white is a pretty Pretty good one. Now, what black could try is moving this knight, find the knight, um, the square for the knight. So, for example, this way, come to the to the c5 square. That could ma make a, a lot of sense. For example, knight c7, and after f4, a5 first just to um, to protect b4 so the knight can be very very safe on c5 uh, and then play something i don't know after knight f3 play some knight knight a6 and uh, and so on so the knight at the end gonna land on c5 where where is a pretty nice piece uh, of course exchanging the, the the bishop isn't that great as the queen can come to to b6 uh, and get back the the bishop this way if white want to actually double the pawns it's not that dangerous because the rook can come to the b file and, and also these pawns uh, can be actually pushed and in exchange for the white pawns so uh, it's not that easy uh, to actually continue I think it's a uh, pretty much good square for the for the knight knight c5 and it's uh, black stands pretty good here uh, however in our game we have g5 so Mortimer plays uh, quite you know interesting chess uh, quite attacking and very active uh, on the on the king side against much stronger opponent as you already know, Akiba Rubinstein is in the top 10 uh, in the world already in 1907. Uh, and Akiba now starts um, the attack on the queen side. C4, um, undermining the center, already, you know, um, attacking the pawn on D5. It's not ready to uh, to take it yet after knight C7, but you know, the tension still stays on the board. We have rook A to D1 and now knight E7. We have knight f3 now attacking um, the pawn on the on the g5 uh, and now g6 defending the pawn bishop c1 bringing another attacker and now finally g4 so the knight should move somewhere we have knight d4 and now queen h4 pretty active move but not really dangerous uh, we have f4 by akiba rubinstein with the plan of solidifying the pawn chain and make the position of the king safe and exchange the queens that's his plan um, and now g takes on f3 could be played however after knight f3 the queen would have to retreat for example h5 then queen f2 uh, and it's not so easy to find the plan for black for example how to coordinate the pieces uh, what to do with this knight this knight is just watching um, d5 and cannot really move there and uh, this knight also has a has a hard time cannot for example you know come and join the attack on the on the king side so uh, it was possible but it's not really recommended instead we have rook c to e8 uh, and now queen f2 as planned so rubinstein want to exchange the queens and actually this was the best uh, what mortimer could get from that position after exchanging actually d takes on c4 b bishop takes on c4 then b5 kicking the bishop Bishop has to be moved and after knight d5 let's say uh, white can solidify the position and then black also can solidify the position and it's uh, gonna be you know pretty drawish uh, or play something uh, more sharp like bishop b5 and after bishop b5 knight b5 a6 kicking the, the knight yes the knight can jump to the very very nice outpost but at the same time rook b8 attacking um the pawn and after moving the pawn black also gonna have a very nice pair of knights in the center very dangerous one so definitely the position would be very very interesting and that's everything what mortimer could get here instead he played queen h6 so he avoided exchanging the queens he already 
already saw how how Rubinstein play against other players. He just you know exchange the queens and outplay them them in the in the late middle game or in the end games. Here Akiba played g3, so he just solidified the position and no more problems on the king side. And now we have a6 preparing b5. Uh, we have a4 now playing against that move, uh, controlling b5, uh, and now rook f7. We have c takes on d5 finally, and now knight d5. So this knight is a very, very active piece. However, James Mortimer missed something. So this is time actually to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white, the strongest continuation you can find. There are at least two very interesting tactics here. So um, that's the hint. Uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move which is liked by Stockfish is actually sacrifice the bishop on f5. This is not what Akiba Rubinstein play, but I will show you this continuation. If you found bishop f5, congratulations, this is also a great move, because after e takes on f5, we have e6, this is actually forced, of course, so uh, bishop e6, and now after rook e6, rook e6, knight e6, there is the problem with this knight. The knight is under attack, and if it's moved, then actually the rook can join the game, and this is gonna be very uh, very, very dangerous. So instead, knight g2 e7, and then queen e2, just to defend the, the knight. The knight can be, of course, attacked, but then knight c7 and all the position fall apart. Uh, knight c7, let's say, then the queen gonna join the game, uh, and then white gonna win the pawn and, and the game as well. So this, this rook can, can jump to d7 uh, if the knight is moved even to d8. So uh, it's, it's impossible to play. Also, this bishop gonna stay on the longest diagonal, and it's a uh, synergy of the pieces is just beautiful beautiful white have very very nice located all of the pieces so bishop f5 was one of the ideas a uh, little bit more complicated uh, but Rubinstein plays something simpler. Uh, you know, simplicity is, is always the best. Knight f5. And now, of course, if the rook takes, then uh, white gonna win the exchange. So that's not the way to go and still have protected past pawns. So that would be too much. This is why we have e takes on f5. And now bishop c4. So if you found um, this continuation, this is also really great. Now, the idea is that the knight is under attack twice and it cannot be moved because because the bishop is hanging just behind, okay? So the rook would get a really, really nice position. And if the knight is moved, for example, to b6, it actually can be taken by the, by the queen. So nothing can be done here. We have knight g to e7 defending the knight and now just simply uh, winning back the material. So bishop d5, knight takes on d5 and rook d5. So what was this tactic about? Uh, it's about winning the past pawn. We have protected past pawn, we just simply gonna win the game. Uh, in our game we have bishop c6 by Mortimer and now rook d6 with the attack on the, on the queen. So of course the rook has a very nice uh, outpost. We have rook e6 and now bishop a3. And now black doesn't have much choice. I uh, can play something like rook d7 but it, it doesn't really matter here. Rook d7, bishop d7, then rook rook d1 uh, and then queen c5 and the position is so good for for white white gonna bring the rook already to the game uh, and so on so definitely it's a it's a should be easy win for white uh, we have rook d6 which doesn't change much here we have e takes on d6 and now bishop e4 so blocking the rook, now the rook cannot get to the, to the 8th rank easily, but now queen d4 threatening to, to advance with the pawn. We have rook d7 stopping that, but now queen c4 with check, king g7, and after bishop b2, James Mortimer resign. And he resign because he gonna lose the rook in the, in the next move. Wherever he go, he go to f7, he gonna lose the rook this way, uh, and he if he goes... Um, to g6, then he gonna lose the rook this way. And uh, and yeah, this of course is completely winning for white. Uh, so this is why after bishop b2, uh, Mortimer resigned. So that was another example, you know, how uh, Rubinstein just outplayed the opponent, just a little inaccuracy here and there. And uh, 
all the position just just collapse after and Rubinstein was the master um, of playing this kind of chess so if you like this video if you learned something press like uh, if you don't like it for some reason press unlike and if you don't want to miss uh, other quality content on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one